So, Dr. Yu, I want you to recap what you were saying about this paper at the ongoing ICCF24 solid state fusion event that we've been covering and we'll cover more in the future, but you saw a paper there that seemed promising from a team in India doing elemental transmutation, something that you said doesn't isn't supposed to happen according to our standard model of physics, huh? That's correct. <laughs> Based on the standard model of physics, the gold has been created from a supernova, you know. You cannot even create it at the, even at the center of the sun. The, the fusion reaction in the sun does not even qualify to create those elements. But the, this paper, you know, if it, of course, if it's a true, which I believe there's a very likely, you know, because lots of evidence, you know, scientific evidence. Uh, so they basically turn nickel into uh, copper and on the tip and the gold. So that's definitely, if you can turn elements, one type of element into different type of elements in our current definition, right? It's a fusion reaction. On the fusion reaction, create a new element. So that means it's a, by itself it's a fusion. But the experiment performed is only on a glass jar, just a, a little bigger uh, glass cup. You know, dip, you know, there's a, a solution they call the light water solution, and the dip two, uh, two, uh, you know, uh, electrodes. One is made of uh, what is a. a, a Graphite, another one is made, made by nickel. And uh, apply vo low voltage, you will see the, see the light, what is the electrical light, you know, see light, a different color light, actually re re represent a different element. So when, when you see the light performed, if you turn the light off, you see the light. And, and the result, it has a copper covered on the body of the, you know, uh, nickel, uh, nickel uh, anode. And also on the tip of the on nickel anode, that there's a lot of content, high concentration of gold. Is that amazing? Was that was that gold at the? Uh, was it visible to the naked eye, or was this very small particles or something? Oh, okay. Uh, so they, they use a special uh, uh, equipment to measure, you know, some certain uh, matter that will measure that one, uh, the concentration. You know, um, uh, I because based on the picture, I'm not able to see it. Uh, you know, yeah, you only see the reaction part. But the an, an, an analysis part, they did a lot of chemical, uh, electrochemical, and also uh, uh light, you know, laser light, you know, uh, analysis. So, um, and this is a very reputable um, uh, paper. Uh, I believe the people are from the Indian Institute of Technology. That's a top university in the India. And what was the, what was the temperature that they had this transmutation take place at? Oh, they performed in the, uh, right on, on top of, say, uh, a working desk, right? Just a size of just a little bigger water cup, and uh, so uh, and they apply low voltage, so you it cannot be have a high heat. However, because you apply electrical voltage, right, you see the electric uh, sparks in there. So the whole thing should be at room temperature. The entire envir environment is in the room temperature. But if you if you say how much heat at the, right at the tip of the anode and the, between the anode and the cathode, right? It's about a one millimeter, one, uh, one uh, centimeter away from them. Uh, them. So, uh, of course, you will see sparks. So that temperature could be high. But as long as... Uh, so we're talking about the low energy means the total energy is still very, very, very small, right? Uh, does not mean so at the tip of the uh, electrical spark. So that could be a thousand or 10,000 or uh, some, some high, high temperatures, right? Um, so, but that doesn't matter. But if, as long as it's low energy, it's nothing, it's harm no, uh, no uh, environment, harm, uh, create no uh, uh, harm, you know, uh, nuclear, uh, you know, particles, you know, hard human body, so it's safe. So that's a typically low energy <laughs> nuclear reaction. So what do you think? What do you think is happening on the physics level to create 
nickel turning into gold? Oh, uh, the physics uh, for me is very simple. So that means uh, the high, those sparks, when you have an electrical sparks at the local, right? What they do, they break the original, the nickel uh, molecular structure and even nuclear structure. When you break that the nuclear structure because of high spark at the tip of the problem have high, uh, you know, um, high energy, right? Then you break the nuclear nuclear structure. What happens? And as it cooling down, when you bring them, they become the charged particles, right? Nuclear. And when them cooling down, so they attach it to the cathode and the anode, you know, on the surface, the cooling down form a new element because originally protons, uh, neutrons, they already separated, right? So as they as they cooling down, they combine with different elements now, the different structure. So now in this case, it has on the most on the big most body, it shows on copper. The product is copper, but on the tip of the copper, you know, the tip has higher temperature, right? Higher vibration frequency. Uh, so and then comes with gold. Of course, gold is heavier than copper, right? So it's not a surprise, and it's much dense than, than copper. So on the tip of the have higher energy, create a heavier metal. It's no surprise to me. I wonder how we can have people further investigate this to scale that up. I mean, there's a lot of value in being able to take copper and turn it into gold at a greater scale. Oh yes, uh, you know, the, yeah. From the, this this experiment is from theoretical point. It's a revolutionary, right? If it can demonstrate that gold can create at a low temperature, right? So that means, um, you know, uh, so kind of theory needed to be rewritten. And yet, we don't see any. I don't see any stories about this in the science media. I've been looking, and I don't find anything. It's interesting. Well, 